Hey everyone, this week we're going to be comparing images from a vintage analogue film camera and a modern smartphone camera. So if you're a regular viewer of my channel, first of all thank you very much, but recently you might have seen a video where I was in my local woodland area using this. This is the Minolta SRT303 vintage analogue film camera. And in that video I was also capturing images with my Google Pixel 7 Pro smartphone camera. The main reason for that was that I knew I wasn't going to get the film developed from the Minolta in time for the publication of the video. So I wanted to capture some images with the smartphone just so that I could show something in the video. And later when I got the film developed I said I was going to make another video. So here I am, I finally got that film developed and I'm going to talk through five of my favourite images from that set and we're going to compare them to the images from the Pixel and just see how they vary between the two technologies from the vintage film all the way through to the modern digital smartphone images. So let's dive in now and have a look at the images. So this is the first image we're going to look at. I shot this one with the 50mm 1.4 Rockhall lens. It was around about 1 15th of a second and I think it was around about f8. So I'm fairly pleased with the composition of this one. I do like the leading line of the trunk, which brings you into the centre of the image there. And the colours are pretty nice. I'm fairly pleased with the exposure, it's quite balanced, the sky's not too blown out, and we've got some detail in the shadows. I did find the exposure system in the Minolta quite easy to use, just lining up the two needles, and all of the exposures did come out fairly well. If we zoom in a little bit, we do see there's some grain close up. Not a lot we can do about that. It was quite a dull day. We were in the woods. There wasn't a lot of light. And I think this really needs a bit more interesting light or some foggy conditions or something to bring it to life because it is quite flat. But that's what I had to work with on the day. And overall, I'm not too displeased with it. If we compare it to the pixel shot, just a bit more depth of field on this one, a bit more clarity in the background. But I do quite like the out of focus background with that leading line from the trunk and then the out of focus background. It really feels like you can walk into the image and there's some depth there. I have done quite a lot of colour grading on the Pixel 1. Maybe too many blues in the shadows there. But I do quite like the colours in the original as well in the, in the film shot from the Minolta. Yeah, overall quite pleased. Right, so next up we've got this shot. I do quite like this one. It's uh, very chaotic, there's a lot of branches going on in this, so very busy, but we've got some strong compositional elements from the trees, and I think it's just about balanced. We've got this very central tree here, and we've got these nice orange leaves on this tree on the left, balanced by this really gnarly green tree here, and then this one on the far right. I think if I was being picky, I would like this tree just behind the central tree to not be there or rather behind the central tree so I probably could have just stepped to my left a little bit and hidden that tree and it's annoying me now when I look at it that I didn't do that but not a lot we can do about that now especially with film. I mean I could edit this in Photoshop but that's not really the point with analogue. So yeah this was shot again with the 50mm and the depth of field is really good, the sharpness. We can see all the way to the back there, everything is really nice and sharp. And the colours again, really nice. I do like that splash of orange, like I said, on the left. If we compare this to the pixel shot, again, I've done a lot of colour grading, but other than that, fairly similar. The depth of field is pretty similar on this one. I think overall I probably prefer the, the film shot with this one actually. I've maybe made this one a little bit too dark. There's a bit more brightness to this one and maybe the greens are a bit more pleasing on the eye. It's a little bit too cold, the, the edit I've done on the pixel shot. So yeah. In terms of exposure and clarity and sharpness and things, I think that was the highest quality image I, I captured on the day. 
So we've got this portrait shot now. This is one of my favourite trees in the woodland area that's near to me. I've captured this shot quite a few times with my Z7. Particularly like this shot in the fog. I do really like this one from the Minolta as well. A little bit different. I'm a little bit further back than I would normally be. I don't normally capture this area at the bottom of the image. But I do quite like it, even though it's out of focus. It just adds a little bit of depth to the image. And it makes it just a little bit different to the, the other shots I've captured of this tree. If I compare it to the pixel shot. You see, this is how I normally capture it, where I've cut off that bottom bit. And I'm a bit more zoomed into the image. But I do like how we can see the holly bushes on either side of the tree here. That frames it quite well. And it's just missing that little bit of fog or something in the background to help separate it. At the minute it's all a bit chaotic with those trees in the background. But again, this was captured with the 50mm. It was about 1 30th of a second f2. And perhaps this silver birch on the right just ruins it a little bit. If that wasn't there, I think it would look a little bit more balanced. But there's not really a lot we can do about that. Unless I just got in a little bit closer and made it a tighter crop or I cropped it in post or something like that. But again, I don't really want to do too much with these. It's analog. I want to use them out of camera mainly. And I'm still overall really happy with this. Like I said, it's one of my favorite trees. I like how it's really central in the frame and it's framed by the holly bushes. So compositionally quite nice, colors quite nice, and the exposure and sharpness has come out pretty well as well. So for this next one, I switched things up a little bit. I put on the 200 millimeter rock or lens, and this was captured at 1 60th of a second f4.5. So we've got a bit more depth of field in here, a more blurred out background, which really helps to separate the tree. And in general, this is a more simple shot. So we've got rid of all that chaos in the background by blurring it out, basically. So it, the, it's quite far away from the subject tree as well. So that helps just to drop it back and the tree stands out really nicely. It's really in focus, quite sharp, a lot of nice textures on there and color. And I, I was quite surprised how sharp this came out considering it's at 200 millimeters and only 1 60th of a second. I mean, yeah, I'm on the tripod, but even still with, um, with an SLR camera, with the mirror in there causing the kick in the camera, that can often create a lot of shake. And at 200 millimeters, could really do with a faster shutter speed. So it's come out fairly well considering. I didn't capture an image of this with my Pixel for some reason, I'm not quite sure why. Must have just forgotten, <laughs> must have been in the moment. But um, yeah, overall, really quite happy with that one. I did get quite a few shots of this with the 28mm as well from a bit further back, but it was only when I put the 200 on and got in close that I really was happy with the shot. So yeah, glad I switched and uh, got that shot. So the final one I want to talk about is this one. I had almost packed up at this point and I think I'd finished the video actually and it was only when I was walking back to the car that I spotted this nice fungus on the side of the tree and there was all these really nice textures in the tree as well so I thought I'd get the camera back out I didn't get the video camera out but I did get a shot of this and I wasn't quite sure if I had actually captured it because I think I, I thought I'd used the full roll of film already and I wasn't sure if it had wound on and I captured this last image but when I got the film back, I had got it, so fairly pleased with that. It is a little bit out of focus at the front. I was, I think I was using the 200mm again for this shot. So I think the minimum focusing distance, uh, I haven't quite got the, the front of the fungus in focus with that. But even still, I quite like it, and I really like all these textures on the tree and how we've got the really blurred out background behind there just to create a bit of contrast. If we look at the pixel shot, you can see I'm quite a bit closer there. I wouldn't be able to get this close with the 200mm on the Minolta. And again, I'm not really liking the colours. <laughs> at the time when I, when I did the colour grading on these, I quite liked it. I thought it was a bit more interesting, but after seeing the colours from the, uh, the film camera, 
I do prefer them, they're just more natural and look nicer. There is quite a bit more grain in this image. It was getting late at this point, the light was really going down, pretty dark. The, the pixel shots fared a little bit better, but there's still a bit of noise in there. But yeah, I just thought it was a little bit different this one. It was nice to see um, a fungus or just something a little bit different to just trees and foliage. And uh, nice to try out something a little bit more macro, a bit closer up with the 200 millimeter. So those were the images that I thought were the best of the bunch. Although to be fair, they were all a little bit dull because of the flat light on the day. But you've got to work with what you've got. The one benefit of the flat light was that there were no extreme highlights or shadows, so I didn't lose any detail there. But I think in future, if I went out at golden hour time, or when there are some better atmospheric conditions, such as fog, I would be able to get some more exciting images. I did really enjoy using the Minolta SRT303 though. It's a very different experience to using a digital camera, obviously. You don't get to see what's on the back instantly when you take the shot. But that's all part of the excitement, you've got to wait till you get the images back after they've been developed and you never really know what you're going to get until you see them. And it's really convenient having the smartphone. Obviously you can keep it in your pocket and you can take an infinite amount of images until you get the right one. So that's great, but there is something about using the analog cameras, winding it on, not quite having the same control with the focusing system, it's a little bit quirky. But that's all part of the challenge and the fun. So I wouldn't want to use it all the time, but it is really good fun and it makes a really nice change. So I've just got a few more images to show you and I'll put those up on the screen now. So that's it for this video, massive thanks for watching, if you have enjoyed it please just give me a thumbs up down below. If you watch every week and you're a regular subscriber, massive thanks for that, really do appreciate it and if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button or over here on my face and that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week, there's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. So next week is not going to be analogue, but I do hope you'll join me for that one. And until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.